Welcome to the Curator's Choice, where our tagline is, keep looking closely and you shall be rewarded. My name is Anne Schaefer, and I'm your resident curator and host. This is episode three, in which we look at and talk about a work of art. In this episode, we'll look at a set of two etchings by the American artist Kiki Smith that I failed, failed to acquire for the Baltimore Museum of Art. (laughs) These ones kill me. So this is the plan for future episodes. I'll share with you a work of art on paper, naturally, or a set of objects. And sometimes they'll be ones that I uh, was successful in acquiring for the museum's collection. And sometimes they'll be the ones that got away, like these two. And sometimes they'll just be objects that I like. I was a museum curator of prints, drawings, and photographs for many years, and now I'm independent. I also want to note my position. I identify as a cis het white woman, and I use the pronouns she, her. I'm recording this in Baltimore, Maryland, the land of the Piscataway Conway people. All right. No, you should know. Hopefully you know. Know that if you're listening to this as a podcast, as audio only, images that I talk about will be in the show notes at the website, thecuratorschoicepodcast.com. And if you're watching this on YouTube, the images will be incorporated into the video. Lucky for you. All right, let's get going. Kiki Smith has been swimming around in my brain for a long time. But it really wasn't until I saw the two etchings she made at Crown Point Press, which is a storied uh, Intaglio printmaking shop in San Francisco, that I wanted to acquire them for the Baltimore Museum of Art's collection. The two prints are called Home and Still. They're from 2006, and they're haunting images of feet. Each image has one pair of feet in them. It becomes clear pretty quickly that these are the feet of homeless people lying on the sidewalk, I assume asleep. Still features the lower legs of a bare-legged woman uh, lying on a concrete sidewalk. There are tiny star tattoos on the backs of her ankles, and in fact this uh, is the legs of the artist herself. She is the model. Home shows the lower legs of a man in boots who appears to be partially sheltered in a cardboard box. Smith came up with these evocative images while wandering around during a trip to San Francisco, which has more than its share of homeless people. At that time, she reported she was interested in making some prints in the vein of WPA prints, which were the Works Progress Administration. These were made during the Depression as part of the larger New Deal employment plan, and which for the most part reflected American life at that time, usually with a sort of social commentary vein going through them. The artist was raised in an artistic family. Her father was the sculptor Tony Smith, and her mother, Jane Smith, was an opera singer. Smith has lived for a long time in New York and has a studio there, and she's represented by Pace Gallery. In addition, her practice in sculpture, drawing, books, and textiles, she's made numerous prints and editions with various print shops throughout her career. Her work focuses mainly on the human body, embodiment, Uh, animals appear, and often fairy tales. There's usually a through line of social commentary. You may or may not know that I have paid attention to contemporary prints only since about 2005. You'll have to listen to other episodes to find out why. And by the time I became aware of Smith's prints, I had totally missed the boat. The edition was sold out and I failed to acquire them for the collection. I just saw that there is a proof available of home, the one of the man's legs and shoes from Crown Point itself. Uh, It's available on the market. You could call them up and buy it. One might really want the pair of them, his and hers, as it were, Um, but would just one be enough? That's really always the question with Prince. Does one say the same thing as the pair? It's a tough call. I would definitely have gone after the pair way back when, uh, when they were fresh off the press. And now, some 15 years later, I think I would take what I could get. So why did these strike me so? I, I, I think it's because of their starkness that she's able to say so much reducing what's in the print. I mean, it's just the legs and the sidewalk and the box in the case of the man. The two pairs of disembodied lower legs and feet, 
like the female lacks shoes. The male figure is wearing boots and dungarees. That's that's jeans for you youngsters. And I, I think that the simple images that, that they point to a much larger problem. I love that with just that pair of feet, she comments really loudly about homelessness. They're beautiful images and we're drawn in by the delicacy of the drawn appendages. Both sets of legs are printed in black ink. There's no color in them. But the backgrounds are delicately colored. They're layered three plates of a red, green, and no, red, yellow, and blue colored swatches on the concrete sidewalk. They kind of, they almost echo those sort of rainbow um, effects you get with a puddle of oil. According to Crown Point Press founder, Kath Ann Brown, the, the background plates, and there's three of them, as I said, one for the red, one for yellow, one for blue, after various trips into the acid, they, the printer and the, uh, the master printer, Emily York and uh, Kiki Smith decided that they, they weren't working the way that they wanted. And so Emily came up with an idea of using the backsides of those plates, which had sustained some random uh, biting as they went through the acid bath of something that we in the biz would call noise. Printing the backsides produced a, a light stacking of these colors that echo a, a beautiful stained sidewalk, as I said. And so there are these two realms. There's color and then there's black and white. And for me, the starkness of the black and white ink enhances the bleakness of the feet where the colors add in an air of sort of both hope and frustration at being held outside of the world of people who live in a technicolor world. Thanks for joining me for another episode of the Curator's Choice podcast. I hope this gives you a sense of what I was thinking when I totally missed out on Kiki Smith's prints for the collection. <clears throat> Maybe someday some donor will give them to the museum through a gift, but I, I don't know that that will happen. If you've got them, give me a call. Many thanks to Kiki Smith and Crown Point Press for sharing the high-res images of the prints. And as always, I welcome your questions and thoughts. Please do us a favor and tell your friends about the podcast. It will really help us spread the word. The Curator's Choice is written and produced by me, Anne Schaefer. Special thanks to Kiki for inspiring this episode. And as always, I have to thank Michael Diamond for the use of his original music. <clears throat> So until next time, keep looking closely and ye shall be rewarded. See you next time. <laughs>